point. <clears throat> Remember, our goal was to take um, a wireframe that we came up with, that is uh, a, a basic description of the layout of our pages, and actually create web pages that match that. And our approach was going to be to make a template, make a HTML and CSS file, and then um, style it in such a way using uh, the, the, the notion of the CSS box model to get it to look the way that we want to, 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 to match our template. Once we did that, we then clone the page, that is, would make copies of the page for each of the specific pages. So here is where we kind of left off last time. We had our template HTML file, and we styled our page to have a navigation section, a section for our content, and then finally a footer section where, in our case, we put credits, but you know you could put um, whatever made sense for your particular project. All right, and we could we could fiddle with this for a while, but we, we'll call this a day and we'll say that this is our first version of it. <clears throat> what we can do then, first of all, we want to make sure that the common HTML is as correct as can be. In other words, what's the common HTML? The common HTML is the HTML that's going to be on every page. So that would be this, this, and this. We want to make sure those things are as correct as we possibly can make them because now we're actually going to copy the page. So if we have to go back and change something, like if I wanted to put uh, our phone number in the header, all right, we want to do it now before we have four copies of this page. All right. In fact, that would be a good idea. Let's put our phone number in here. So I'm going to go into the template and open it with uh, my text editor. We want to make sure we have that as correct as we possibly can so that when we start copying this, um, we don't have to go back and change anything. Because once we start copying it, we're going to have to make our change multiple times. Okay, so let's assume we're happy with this. Now keep in mind, I'm a little less concerned about the CSS because the CSS is isolated and will remain isolated in one file. So if I decide that a little bit lighter shade of red here or I want to make this font bigger or whatever, 
I only have to make that change in one place. So I'm a little less concerned about the CSS. What I'm most concerned about is the common uh, HTML code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and clone this four times. I'm going to give them these names. And we'll have our site. Let me close this. And here is where you would actually create the content for each of the pages. I'm not going to do that in the interest of time. I'm just going to put a little message in here. And I'll go and save it as. index.html and I'll make several copies of it. All right. Now, if we did everything correct, we can get rid of the template. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm just going to move it out of there. All right. And I can go and I should have a complete website. So I click on index. I get this warning in Internet Explorer. I'm going to say allow. That is that HTML5 shiv that I put in there. So. Um, your users won't get that sort of warning, so don't worry about that. But at any rate, here's my home page, and I can navigate around to the menu, catering, and contact. Notice everything looks consistent, um, and we're good to go. We can now, now go and make each page serve its specific purpose. So I could actually fill in the details on the home page, and fill in the details on the menu, contact, and catering page. All right? Questions about this. Now that we're getting into multiple pages, um, we might want to start worrying about putting stuff in directories. All right? Because if we look at this, we have all these files in one directory. Not that that's a big problem per se, but just like you would on your machine at home have things organized into folders or directories, it's a good idea to have your stuff organized in folders here. Um, so far, what I've said is that keep everything in the, you know, up to this point in the class, I've said keep everything in the same folder and uh, then you don't have to worry about just give the name of the file. You don't have to put the path in front of it or anything like that. All right. We're going to organize it, though, so that things are in their own uh, um, folders. And, and I'm going to do what is often done. That is, I'm going to create a separate folder for images and for style sheets. So I'll have all the images in one place, um, the style sheets in another place, and the um, HTML in, in another place. So I'm going to create two subdirectories here. One for images, 
and one for style. And we're going to move all the stuff in there. So I'm going to move the Firefox style into the style. I'm going to move my regular style sheet into the style. And I'm going to move my image there and image there. Now what do you suppose is going to happen if we view this page now? Now that we move those files around. Yeah, it's not going to be able to find those things because it's looking for everything in the same directory. So it's no longer in the same directory, so it's not going to find it. So it's not going to be able to find the images, and it's not going to be able to find the style sheet, so we're going to get a very plain looking page. All right? So what do we have to do? And <laughs> this is the perfect case of I should have did this before I clone the files, right? So this is a good example of me learning my own lesson here of doing this before because now I'm going to have to make that change everywhere. All right. So, as far as the style sheets go, if we go and edit this guy, This one, this was looking for it in the same folder. So it's now in a folder called style. So to refer to a different folder, to refer to a folder that is underneath where the page is, I simply have to put in the name of the folder and then the slash. So I have to do just that. What that is saying is, it's not in the same folder. Go first to the folder style and then use these file names. So to go down a folder, you simply put the folder name in, a slash, and then the file name. All right? And so I'm going to go and I'm going to copy these lines of code. And I, I think you see exactly what I mean here that don't tell, I forgot to save it. I'm going to go in and edit each of these. Paste the new code in. Ah, I was looking at the contact page. I only changed the home page. And there we are, more or less back to where we were. Except we have a problem that it can't find the images anymore. All right? And it doesn't do the mouse over for here. So we got the CSS issue addressed, but we did not get the images issue addressed. Now, let's look at the CSS, because the images are in the CSS. So... If I look at the CSS here,
is looking for the image again without a directory name. That means it's looking for it in the same folder as the CSS file is. It's actually not in the same folder as the CSS file is. It's in a different folder. Now, this one's going to be a little different, though. We have our main folder that has all the HTML pages in it. We then have a style folder and an images folder. Let me draw it like this. Underneath main we have our HTML files and we have a style and an images folder. To point to an image we have to go up a folder and then down. Some of you may have had the operating system class where you navigate through the different folders and I can't jump from this folder over to that folder. I have to go, both of these are underneath my main folder So I have to go up to the main folder and then down the images. Okay? So, that's what I'm going to do here. The dot dot means go up a folder. So I'm in the style folder. I go up. That's my main folder or sometimes called the root folder. And then from there I go down to the images folder. And that should be all I need to do. Okay. So I change both of the references to the images to this. In, uh, so from the style folder, go up a folder. So I'm in my style folder. I have to go up a folder and then down the images. So there's two things that you need to do to, to know. In, in, as far as creating your path. These are called relative paths, by the way, because you're saying where a file is in relation to some other file. To go down a directory, you simply put the directory name. So if I'm in the root folder and I want to go down to style, I simply put style. To go from style to images, though, I first have to go up to the root folder and then down to, to images. I can't jump across. So to go up, you use the dot dot sign. So and we're back to normal. OK? So it would be a good idea when you start getting into multiple page sites, definitely for your project, and you can start working on this um, even with some of your other assignments is creating subfolders for the images and CSS and other stuff. It just really helps you organize stuff a lot better and helps you find things that you need to edit. All right? And remember again, a simple rule. All right? If you're going down a folder, simply put in the name of the folder. If you're going down two folders, put the name of the two folders going down and so on. Remember you can't go across in a folder structure. You have to go up and then down. The dot dot takes you up one level in the directories. The, the folder name takes you down a level. One thing that you will not have is something that looks like C colon backslash backslash program files slash user slash mzeller slash whatever. Because that will only work literally on my machine or a machine that's configured exactly like mine. So don't use the full path for the file name. Use these relative paths where you say based on where the current file is located. Then when you move it from machine to machine, as long as you keep all the folders in the same relative position to each other, then you'll be okay. All right. So is this the only way to style this? Absolutely not. We could style this a whole bunch of different ways. All right. In fact, what I want to do is I want to show you a website 
that demonstrates the flexibility that you have with CSS. And this site is called CSS Zen Garden. Now let me explain to you how this site works and what this site is. This site, they invited designers all over the world, best top-notch designers, to go and take this HTML page and create a style sheet for it. So this site really consists of one page that's styled a bunch of different ways. All right. Let's notice a couple of um, signposts that we can recognize as we go and look at the different versions because the versions are going to be radically different from each other. First of all, there is a word, CSS Zen Garden, the beauty of CSS design. The road to enlightenment, so what this is all about, and so on down the line. Now, there's a link to view all the designs and if we click on that link, we can see all the different variations of the basic design here. Now the thing to keep in mind is that all of these pages are based on the same HTML file. It's not like these are different web pages. They're the identical HTML file. They have just substituted a different style sheet. So, let's go around and pick some. Let's pick this one. You know what? I am going to view this in Chrome simply because I'm thinking there could be some lingering H. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Same page as we saw before. The beauty of CSS design, CSS Zen Garden, a demonstration of what can be accomplished, the road to enlightenment. So what is this all about? All right. Let's pick another design here. CSS Zen Garden, the beauty of CSS design, the road to enlightenment. So what is this all about? Identical HTML, just styled differently. We have a little robot that pops up and says hi. CSS Zen Garden, the beauty of CSS design. So what is this all about? The road to enlightenment participation. That's a good opportunity for you to practice and to come up with a design for this site. All right. Um, but it's also a good example uh, to go and view and be inspired by the fact um, of, of how all these pages if you didn't know better, you would think that these are totally different web pages, but they're not. They're the same page, just styled differently. Same HTML. Now, don't be discouraged because some of these look great and, and some of these are beyond my skills as a graphic designer. All right, so don't feel like, well, I can't do as well as that, but use it as inspiration. Just like a kid watching basketball, you know, you, you're not, you know, don't look at Michael Jordan and say, I'm never going to be that good. Look at, look at Michael Jordan and say, well, you know, if I practice really hard, maybe I could be that good someday. So the point is, as we look through all these pages, we can take any visual aspect of the page and change it and make it look different. All right? And as long as we keep a good separation between the HTML and CSS, so we have the CSS in one file, the HTML in another, we don't use any of the old bad habits that used to exist in HTML, which I haven't even gone over in this class, but if you've done HTML for a while, things such as the font tag or putting um, visual attributes right on HTML elements and things like that. 
If you avoided those things, then you have like the ultimate flexibility. And that's important. And it's more important now than ever when we start talking about mobile devices. All right. Uh, one thing we'll talk about in a few classes here is how I can style the same web page and make it work, make it be effective both on a desktop, which is, has a wide monitor, and on a mobile device where the monitor might be very, or the, the screen might be very small. Now this particular one doesn't really look like it would work on a small screen size. All right, but some of these other designs, A design like this, if you could imagine this on a phone, that looks reasonably good. And if you can imagine this on a desktop, it looks good as well. So that designer really took care to make this design work across a variety of different platforms. That's really one of the big challenges, probably the biggest challenge of web design, is that you don't know what your client is going to be using in terms of what kind of hardware, what kind of system, are they going to be on a Mac or PC, are they going to be using Internet Explorer or Chrome or Firefox, um, are they going to be using a tablet, a laptop, a phone, a desktop, all these things are variables and you have no control over those things, all right, but you still got to make it work, all right, and the more that you can make it work, well, for everyone, the better job you're doing as far as web design, all right? So what we're going to do the next rest of this class and, and continuing on is seeing how we can vary our design to make it look completely different, all right, than our original template um, without changing the HTML at all. Hopefully we'll be able to make a lot of changes and not even touch the HTML. All right. Um, so that's what we're going to do next. So we're going to explore a couple different techniques that can be used to get um, and achieve um, the kind of layout we want. All right. The next example that we're going to do and I'm going to go and I'm going to copy I'm going to give these um, version numbers so version one is the version that we just completed version two I'm going to start out by chucking all that CSS that we worked so hard on. So we're back to our basic layout. And we're going to go for this kind of layout. Instead, our original layout, the wireframe looked like this header, navigation, content, footer. Our next layout, we're going to go to have it look like this header, navigation, content, and footer. All right. In doing so, we're going to control the location of these things. In the previous example, we didn't really do anything to control the positioning of the elements. We just let them fall into place, one after another. And that is called the, the sort of the flow layout. In other words, if you don't specify the, the uh, position of HTML elements, they simply flow the first element, the second element, the third element, and the fourth element. If you're talking about block elements. What we're going to do here is we're going to control the positioning of those things. And we're going to use fixed positioning. All right. Um, fixed positioning is not used a lot anymore, but it's a good place to sort of start our discussion. All right. 
Fixed positioning would be used if you wanted a very specific layout under very specific circumstances. So there may still be a place for it, but um, it is less popular than it used to be. In fixed positioning, we can add an extra piece to the box model. Remember the box model, we talked about the width, the height, the margin, the padding, the border. We can add another dimension, and that dimension is the position. And we can put the position from the top and the left. So for each of these boxes, I can specify where that top left corner is going to be. So let's start out by, let me just rough out a couple of things. And I'm going to say, header I'm going to give a border around it so that we can see it. When I'm developing CSS, um, a lot of times I will either put a border or change the color of something, even if it's just temporarily, so that I can actually see exactly where it appears. Because sometimes when you start positioning things, it's not clear like what is what on your page. Whereas if you give things different colors or different borders, then you can see, well, okay, that's my header, that's my footer, and so on. So I'm going to give a header for this, and I'm going to say the top is going to be 10 pixels. The left is going to be 10 pixels. So let me save this, and then we'll look at our page again. All right. 10 pixels from the top, 10 pixels from the left. Let's bump that up to 100 pixels, just for dramatic effect. All right, well, let's go in and run it through the validator to see if I've made any mistakes on the CSS.
congratulations, no errors found. Ah. I forgot to do this, position absolute. And how do I recognize that? Because every semester when I do this, I forget position absolute. So does that mean that I don't make the mistake next semester? No. It just means that I discover the mistake quicker. All right. Someone said that's what experience is. You know, the ability to um, realize what mistake you made more quickly after you've already made it. So now we'll go and we'll look at this and we'll see If I open it with Chrome, there we go. All right, it's positioned there. Now, why do these other guys appear over here? All right, because I didn't specify a position for them yet. So what do they do? Well, they just go into the flow. So there's flow, and then there is the things that I explicitly put a position on. So I either put a position on something, or it falls into the flow. All right, so this I put a position on, and therefore it appears here. The rest of these things sort of go in the flow, and they just start at the top and go down. Well, obviously that's not what I want. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to start. I'm going to put a position for my other elements, and I'm just going to guess on some of these things. So for the nav, I'm going to make the top 150, let's say, the left 50. For the section, I'm going to make the top 150, the left 250. And for the footer, I'm going to make the top 450, the left 50. So I just guessed at those things and, well, not horrible, but <laughs> it is pretty horrible, right? A couple things here. First of all, I can, I can fiddle with this to get this exactly uh, the way that I want it to. You know, this is too far over. The other thing I can do is I can put heights and widths on some of these things, and that'll help things a bit. So, for example, if I go into nav, I'm sorry, if I go into the nav and section, I'm going, to put the, I'm going to put it down a little bit further from the top. Um, And notice that if I don't give a height and width of these things, it makes them as big as they need to be. All right, we're getting closer. I need to bump the footer down a little bit now. And I could fiddle with these things to get them exactly the way that I want to. Now, what's the key to this? The key to this is that I can position uh, things by assigning a top and a left to them. All right. Now, there's a lot of problems with this approach. And, and I show it only because in some specialized cases it does work. And it's also a very simple way to do that. All right. Now, I can start putting in my, the rest of my style stuff, you know. I can put in some padding, for example. A 
the one thing that a lot of students forget when they turn in assignments is they don't put any padding and stuff looks sort of cramped. But I can put some padding in here in each of these. Alright. I can maybe make push the section over a little bit more. Maybe bring the footer up a bit. Oh, that didn't look good. Oh, left 1750, way over there. <laughs> All right. I could also fiddle with the things to make these edges line up. Let's take a look at that. The header right now, I have no width on. If I make it And again, I'm just guessing ballpark numbers for these. If I make these Yeah, I think we're a little off, but you get the idea. All right. So now we have it positioned that way. Now the problem with this layout is this layout, notice that as the screen gets bigger or smaller, the layout stays the same. Which means that if we were going to view this on a phone, it would look like that. It wouldn't look particularly good. Because everything is nailed down. We specify a number for the top, a number for the left, a, uh, a number for the height, and a number for a width. We can zoom it, but notice again, when we make it too small with the zoom, that goes out. That leaks out of there. Because again, we've hard-coded in those values. So there's a lot of disadvantages of this, but at the very least, there is, um, you know, on some occasions you will use something, you could use something along this. And again, the nice thing is, is that all our pages look the same, because we're pointing to the same CSS file. Now, one thing we could do is we could, again, this is just sort of the basics of the layout. We could then apply all the other stuff that we've learned to make it look better. For example, we could get rid of the bullet points. Um, so I could do that by saying nav ul. What does that mean? In the navigation section, all the uls make the list style type none. So that will get rid of the bullet points. Let's put a background image on the whole page. We have not done that yet. All right, so let's go and let's look for And I'm going to pick, I'm going to go into advanced search here. And I'm going to say, give me large. And give me one that I can, uh, that are free to use. So, pick the 
this one. So I'm going to go and save this image. In my images folder, All right. Now, I'm going to go and I'm going to put it in the background of the whole page. So I'm going to say body. Background URL. Images. Right, we're in the style sheet folder, so we go up to images, slash, and what did I call it? Big pizza dot JPEG. And something didn't work. No. I called it large pizza, not big pizza. And you're right, I do need the dot dot. So two things wrong. Maybe. There we go. All right. Well, no mistaking this for a pizza place, right? Of course, what's wrong? Well, we can't read any of the words. All right. So what could we do to fix this? We could, we could make the text another color. All right. So we could do that. And I could go in here and say body color white, for example. And that should... make it easier to read, all right, which it does. Other thing we could do is we could play a bit with the transparent background. All right, so I always have to Google this because I have not done this enough. But I can go in here and say give an opacity of a certain number. So I could say background white opacity I'm going to get rid of the white color up here and it's background, not background. And there we have the text sort of floating 
on top of the peat so you can sort of see the image peeking through and, and, um, and so on. All right, of course there's more stuff that we can do. You know, I, I, I certainly cannot cover every single CSS property, but um, what I plan to do is plan to do enough of them so that you have the idea, like if I want to do something, here's where I look and figure out how to do a, a particular thing on your own. So we'll cover some of the most, more popular ones and um, the rest, you know, you, you know, you can figure on your own. Now, here's the idea. The idea, though, the fundamental idea, though, is we're taking the same HTML page and just styling it differently. All right? Um, so the HTML has not changed from the last change that I made to it when I put things in the right folder. All right? And we have the flexibility, then, to go all these different directions with the layout depending on what it is that we're after. All right? And we get that flexibility because there's a good separation between them uh, the CSS and HTML, and the CSS is all in one place, and so we make the change in one place, and everyone gets that change. All right, we'll continue this uh, on Wednesday. We'll see you up in lab.